So it's close enough to seven. And so we will begin the Wellfleet Select Board public me meeting of Tuesday, July 9th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Wellfleet Senior Center. We'll start with announcements and open session and public comments. Please be aware that comments must be brief and the board will not deliberate or vote on any matter raised solely during the announcements and public comments. Are there any from the board? Yes, um, just to clarify something that I said uh, in my disclosure statement um, at the beginning of the meeting uh, where the rest of the board or other members of the board signed the purchase and sale agreement for the Helter property. So that people who might expect me to answer questions, simply fact questions that I could ordinarily answer, I'm not going to be doing any of that until the money that has been deposited from my donation is completely in the town's possession. Right now it's in an escrow account. So please don't think I'm rude if I don't e email you back or answer you directly where I would like to. After that's over, I'm all yours. I'll talk with you and answer as many questions as you have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kathleen? Uh, Janet, uh, I'd like to thank the um, uh, police and the fire. Um, departments for um, keeping us safe over the 4th of July weekend and escorting us through um, a terrific parade on Thursday. And uh, uh, from talking to a lot of people, um, visitors and residents alike, um, the weekend was um, relatively good. So thank you very much, Chief Fassett and Chief Pauly. Yeah. Thank you from all of us. Anyone else? Okay, oh, um, yes, announcements from the audience. Um, I have a few of you, just for a couple of moments quickly. Um, the Special Olympics, we had a check presentation. We had a tip of cop event back on June 19th. The t with that program, we raised over $2,700 for the Special Olympics. So I'd just like to thank everybody for that. It was a huge success. Um, also like to notice, um, ACO Desmond Keogh has resigned. So I'd like to thank him for his service. So we wish him the best and things like that as we try to work out what's going on and things like that. But he's a wonderful person, he's done a wonderful job and just want to recognize him and, things, and thank him for that. Um, along with the July 4th weekend and things like that, Cape Cod Times has uh, contacted me and we're receiving some sort of kudos on Friday's paper for how we handle the whole weekend. So they did recognize oh, it. Great. So we are expecting something. I think it's gonna be cheers, well maybe it's cheer. We'll find cheers out. And cheers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cheers, I think. So, yeah, great. Um, but I, I would also like to thank the Wellfleet staff, um, police officers, dispatchers, the National Park Rangers, lifeguards, the beach program, the DPW. We had Howitch PD here. We had the Sheriff's Office here. Um, Mamie Frazier's help with keeping the lot clean. It was a great. phenomenal weekend. Yeah. A lot of people around, and I think we did real well. So, I would like to thank everybody for all the hard work they put in there. You guys see me all the time, but it really is the troops yeah. out there working the road and doing everything, and they just did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Um, we did put a posting on a Facebook activity. Very active weekend, as you can imagine, from Wednesday all the way through Sunday. Um, traffic was a, balled up everywhere. Everybody was here. I think Wellfleet may have shrunk down the ocean a little bit with all the weight of everybody being here. But we had no major incidents to report. We had three OUI arrests. We had three IPs, five accidents. I'm teen, a 15 or so traffic control post, but everything that, with all the people here, it went real well. So I'm very <coughs> thankful to my staff, and I can't thank them enough, and everybody in us supporting CAS to make it a good weekend for everybody. Well, thank you for being prepared, and I know it's a lot of extra work, but uh, it paid off. So paid great, off. it was you. really good. You don't know how many numbers or how much like anybody on the Cape reported, because I know all all week from Wednesday through Sunday, and even Monday morning, they were saying how many people there were here. I, yeah. I don't know, all I know is that Route know. 6 was a parking lot, everywhere you went was a parking lot, people were everywhere. Yeah. The, all the ocean beaches were filled up right away early. Uh, yeah. I think Suzanne can sit there, I think by nine o'clock on Saturday, they were, yeah. okay, <laughs> 9.14, they, yeah. they were riding around looking places. We had over 50 buses that I'm aware of on two 50? days that dropping wow. people off. And for all the people here, and just having three arrests, 50 motor vehicle stops, I, it went well. And I'm very happy with everybody and the service of everybody did, so Great. very proud. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other from the audience? Uh, yes. Mr. Costa, do you want to say, yeah. Um, I apologize for following that wonderful report with what I have to say. Um, anyhow, I, was, uh, I went to the uh, bike committee meeting today that didn't happen. Somebody got ill and they, they put it off. But I went there because the last meeting that I watched here, I was listening to Ned and the board talk about uh, what's going on on Route 6. And I've spoken to a bunch of people since. And um, I don't know where you are in this. You may be further along the road. and. Maybe I'm too late to say what I have to say, but I'm going to say it anyhow. I think it's a horrifying idea to have two-way bike traffic going there. I can, you know, horrifyingly envision in my mind people going in opposite directions and someone accidentally bumping into somebody else, knocking them into the traffic lane. I just think we ought to all keep in mind that whatever happens out there, we are the host community. So the good is going to be remembered and the bad is going to be remembered. Yeah. So I hope that that doesn't happen that way and you let Ned and that committee figure another way to do it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. And I know the bike committee has um, a lot of ideas um, and they ha need answers to their questions and we'll, we'll just work on it. We're going to have to work with the DCR, not the DOT, but the DCR too. So thank you for that comment. Yes. I will be concise and brief. Please identify yourself. I'm Dale Donovan. At the last meeting of the board, you, Madam Chair, stated that you were on the Bike and Walkway Committee eight or ten years ago. That is false. There is no public record that shows you were a member of the committee at any time. I could recite for you the members since the committee's inception in 2011, if you would like. Well, However, let, me, let me think 2011. I'll tell you who was on the committee with me but I can't remember. John Cumbler, um, when was he on? Well, we'll I will recite them. In 2011, okay. someone that I do not know, Donna Zecker, S-C-E-K-E-R, and okay. Dale Donovan. 2012, okay. Frank Corbin, John Cumbler, Dale Donovan, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I'm not here to belabor that point, but it goes in with my larger point. Um, what I want to talk about isn't the bike trail, and it's not the specific of any other issues that have come up recently. What I do hope is that when you reach the goal-setting portion of your agenda, both tonight and in the future, you'll address something even more important, restoring the credibility of the select board and the town government. You cannot maintain the public's trust without addressing the public concerns. You are failing to do that in several very important issues that affect everyone in Wellfleet. In one case, it involved doing what you said you would do at town meeting. In the case of the bike trail extension, it simply meant signing a letter. In case of the Herring, Ridge, uh, Herring River project, I will congratulate and thank Dan Hort for addressing a misconception that may be out there by pointing out there was a second opinion from town council, and I'm sorry I haven't been to town meeting yet to see it. But there's another thing. We have an opportunity, we hope, to get some concessions from the seashore. Usually when somebody wants something from the town, they might give you something. I've tried repeatedly to get the board to A, allow the town to use land in the seashore that is town property for affordable housing. Previous boards have not done that. I've, and I'm hoping, since we've been turned down flat on any parking lot there, that use the leverage and the power that you have. So I hope you'll address these issues. And I thank you for the hearing. And I think people should also be aware that you're under no requirement to have a public session or public comment. So I thank you for doing so. Thank you. And you know I respect your opinion, Dale. But I was on the bike committee <laughs> for, for a number of years. So I'll look it up. Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Jan Morrissey. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. um, 
So I just want to make a statement. Contrary to uh, what you read in the Cape Cod Times this week, I'm not looking to stall the Hilda purchase. Um, I think buy, buying Hilda was a great idea. I voted for it on town meeting floor. And Helen's generosity to this town is remarkable and should be applauded. Um, I have no doubt that the process by which this purchase was conducted was done with only the best of intentions. However, I believe the process was executed with a little more haste and emotion than perhaps good business sense and municipal responsibility. So once a survey of the Hilda purchase is obtained, please get an independent appraisal. Uh, the purchase price for this property was much debated, and the public was assured on several occasions that an appraisal would be obtained. Uh, those assurances influenced many town meeting voters, including myself. Um, further, town council recommended that an appraisal be attained because of the unique nature of the property. And based on the email I sent to you yesterday, um, the seller's appraisal may only address a portion of the acreage that the town is buying. Um, I got a call yesterday from sele uh, former selectman Jerry Houck, and he gave me permission to use his name. He said that to the best of his recollection, the select board intended to get an independent appraisal of Hilda. So please, getting one is a sound business practice and it's town council recommended it and doing so will go a long way toward uh, restoring public trust. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Justina? Uh, as a point of order, may I respond to Dale? Uh, yes. Um, okay. I'm gonna just say, looking out at the audience, I see at least three talented people I um, asked over and over if they'd like to run, that we have uncontested elections for the Board of Selectmen, there were unpaid volunteers, that nobody on the board has a law degree, that we work very, very, very hard, um, and it makes our job a lot easier uh, if we're treated with the same courtesy of rhetoric that we are expected uh, to treat you, the citizens. That doesn't speak very well for your colleagues, does it, since you were looking for other people to run against them? Okay, I think that was a misunderstanding. But um, and yeah, let's carry on. Remember, there's no debate or discussion, so we'll end it at that. Um, did someone behind have it? Were you just, were you raising your hand or? Okay, I guess not. All right. So um, I want to address the different comments. Um, from individuals that we got, emails we got regarding the Hilta purchase and the appraisal. Madam Chair, uh, yep. the last mention of Hilta caught me by surprise, but I'm going to recuse quite formally whenever it get, comes up. So I'm just going to stand there, and when you're done, wave at me, okay? I'm going to do the whole nine yards. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, there were a number of emails, maybe like six to eight, and they were, some, they were somewhat, I won't say vague, but anyhow, they didn't have the detail in them, so I called a number of people to try to get more detail. We will discuss this at our next meeting in two weeks. We will address it in two weeks. Uh, we're not um, prepared to do it tonight. And um, there is a timeline of the whole purchase and sale. Uh, is, it on the, is it on the website yet? Um. No, I don't. I don't think I've okay. the purchase and sale up. I can do it though. Or, or the t the timeline. The oh, the timeline. Yes, that is up. That if you is look up. under 2019 annual town meeting. Okay. Um, it's listed there under quick links. Okay, so you can review that to see to see the timeline and the choices that were made or maybe weren't made. Um, and um, if you have questions, be specific in your questions and email them in to us. So not that you didn't like the process, but what you didn't like about the process, okay? It helps to know what we're referring to. All right, so um, moving on to appointments. Any more from the, from the crowd? Okay. Um, Sheila Lyons, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late, but um, is there going to be an appraisal done? I, I believe that that was... Um, so you know, did you look at, at the timeline? It was recommended, even though it might not have been legal. Uh, you were legally bound to do it in a case like this. No, we're not legally question, bound, right? We're not legally correct. bound. But it was here. recommended that you do it, yeah. and there was a list that the okay. attorney provided you, and there was a list that I provided you from another person who I respect quite 
greatly, and if I said his name, so would you. And uh, he just wanted to stay out of it because he's not even okay, from so this I town. I do not recall getting a list from you. I sent a, um, an email with the body of a letter. When this first came up, before okay. even the forum meeting, and I reached out to oh, a person okay. who deals a lot with land transactions for conservation purposes and other, okay. and yep. I said, you know, I'm just wondering, um, does this seem like a lot of money to you? And if it is, is there a way to help this happen, such as if there was a reduced rate, which some of this timeline says that it was first 33, hear me out, Jen, please. Yeah, 3.5, I know you want me to go <laughs> yeah, on, you know, yeah. you want to end this, but I'm just trying to go through something. It, yeah. So it was originally $3.5 million. Somewhere out there they have a thing that says even more than that. They have it, an official it, appraisal. It, it's not a thing. That it's, is, it's, it's old. Uh, they have sold okay, property it, okay. since then, which changes that appraisal. Right. Okay, so it's an invalid appraisal. So that's an appraisal I want to talk about. However, the thing is, if it was of increased value, and they are selling it at a reduced rate, there should be an accountant uh, um, helping them get some sort of credit for that reduced rate. And if we are overpaying, I'd like to know that. So the thing about not having an appraisal is no one knows um, what, what it is we're buying, for how much, and I'm, and I'm sort of um, curious why those people are so, the, the sellers are so um, willing to reduce this rate uh, without, there is you know, some kind of tax benefit if, if, well, okay. if it's provided for them. So again, so, I said, I just said we're gonna discuss it in two weeks. Okay, and well, email, this might have been gone, your, done, gone through yeah. by two weeks. I mean, we had 30 days, and it, the talk, clock is ticking. I think it would be good to put a pause on it and get an appraisal so that everybody knows where they stand in this situation and why the taxpayers and what the taxpayers are paying. It would, I mean, you, you would not buy a house in this, pro, in this manner, and neither would I. We would want to know what it is we're buying and for how much and why. Yeah. So... Um, let's look at our town the same way we would our personal house, since it's each and every one of our money I hear going you. towards it. Yeah. Thank you. So I would just also ask everybody, what would you pay for 250 acres on the water? Nope, that's it. We can't discuss. What? Yeah. Yeah. So there was an appraisal. Okay. All right. There is a, okay, there's a legal appraisal that they gave us. So, okay. All right, never mind, we're not, we're not discussing it. Okay, moving on. Uh, appointments, so um, Spani Shepard here. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, Chair. Here. What? Um, oh. here. appointment A for planning board rep to the local comprehensive planning committee. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie Shepard is not here with us this evening. Um, I would like to move that we postpone her appointment until we can have a conversation with her. She is new to the planning board um, having been appointed, I believe, three months ago. So I want to make sure that she's, uh, you know, willing and able to uh, take on another task here. Okay. So may I move to postpone yes, that, may. Madam Chair? Oh, yeah. Yes. Did I miss something? Not at all. <laughs> well, what did you just do? Oh, we're, uh, Kathleen is moving to postpone the appointment, appointment to the uh, local comprehensive plan because Bonnie isn't here and she's new to the planning board. Oh, okay. okay. Well, what she's already made the mo she's making the motion. Sorry. Go ahead. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, may we do? May I have a discussion now that we've moved it and seconded it? I have to say that Bonnie Shepard, even before she got on the planning board, is a known quantity to me, and her willingness to serve is something I'm sure that she's because of her professional background, absolutely able to do. And, you know, it's okay if we don't vote to appoint her tonight. What I'd like to, and we've met her already because we should get on the planning board and we've seen her resume. But if she, we don't decide not to vote up for her tonight, I want to urge her uh, to connect with them and go at least to meetings until she is appointed. But we have seen her resume. Yes, we have. So that's yeah. just where I Madam am. Chair, with through you to um, Ms. Okay. Wilson. Okay, go ahead. Um, Bonnie is splitting her time between Wellfleet and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure, you know, she can. 
she is really clear <coughs> about showing up. Okay. So, and she just couldn't do it in the first two meetings she had with the planning board because she had a work schedule, but she is now totally committed to showing up. Well, so I appreciate you speaking for her. There's no harm in postponing it. With her. Is there another, um, is there a comprehensive plan meeting coming up? Like in the next two it's weeks? Thursday, I think it's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Well, you could certainly email her please and ask her to be there. Uh, she, she is away in Cambridge until the, until the summer. She's until the end of August. She, she is not coming okay. back. No, no, she's not yeah. coming back. She comes back for one week. I think she said yeah. she may be able All to right. make oh, that they meeting. rent the house. She did inform us of this at the last meeting. She also said she asked for an all, uh, second person from the planning board and got no volunteers. So okay. She all wanted right. to be an all. So yes, she has all the material. She's, she's catching herself up to date and she gets all the emails. So great. A question for you, for Courtney through you. Okay. She's coming back for planning board meetings, right? I, I do not believe so, no. no. Because she said to me when I talked with her before she even applied that she would drive down for, you know, spend the night. She has okay. friends. She's Anyway. But yeah, we don't need to discuss this. We need to clarify this. Okay, so uh, there's a second to the motion to postpone the appointment of Bonnie Shepard to the Local Comprehensive Planning Committee. Second. All in favor? I'm going to okay. vote for it. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. And now we have a new full-time police officer, Michael Allen. Yes. Good evening. Welcome. In October of 2018, I gave notice to the Board of Selectmen my intent to retire. Um, as part of that, we came up with a succession plan. Um, we identified Lieutenant Hurley would take over as the chief when I retire. We also talked about having an officer hired early so we can get the person That's into right, the yeah. academy. So when I retire, they'll be getting out and will be a full complement come summer of 2020. If we don't hire the person, that means we have to wait until the fall or the spring of 2020 or the fall of 2020, and then it delays it another year. So in that scope of what we have presented to the Board of Selectmen, we did interviews. The interview committee has turned around and recommended that Officer Mike Allen, Special Officer Mike Allen, be appointed to be a full-time officer. He was with us last year as a community service officer. He is currently a su summer special officer that's working with us. And we're looking to have him hired, and we'll put him into the academy in October and have him out and be ready for the summer of next year. Great. Well, you look ready to go. Do you want to say anything? You don't have to, but <laughs> <laughs> and I, just, I just thought, you know, maybe, maybe start interviewing you. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Yeah, I have a question. Thank you for being willing to serve in uh, Wellfleet. However, I'm a little concerned about something, Chief. Yes. So you're going through training. What we got in our homework is there are all kinds of things you have to qualify according to, and I understand you've been a special police officer, but what I do not get is hiring somebody as a full-time officer before he or she qualifies completely. Here we have Mr. Allen will need to attend a 20-plus week full-time police officer academy thing, uh, which starts in October. And you want him to be appointed as a full-time police officer at the beginning of September. I don't get that. Okay. What, what we do is we appoint him as a, an officer, a student officer that can go to the academy. He's on probation for that period of time. If he does not complete the academy, if he does not complete any of the process, then we can pull the offer from him and things like that. I am looking for you to have the start time in September. We can start some of his FTO early. We will work out the exact start time, just like we do with uh, Officer Pimentel before him, Officer Nick Daly before him, and we try to coordinate when's the best time to start him and things like that to get him ready for the academy and things like that. <laughs> so I still don't understand. In other words, I could see hiring any officer. Please don't take nope. this personally. Um, it's just a budget thing. You know, it's like why not start at the beginning of October, why that extra month? I mean, if somebody isn't qualified for a month and is qualified as a special, I, I just don't get calling somebody something that he or she isn't, isn't yet right. like that and paying them for it, although I wish you could all be paid the moon, okay? <coughs> so what happens is that after the academy, we have a three-month FTO program 
we may do some of that FTO program before he goes off the academy and thus to reduce the same time frame. And it's just expediting how we can use him and put him to work as best for the department. It's worked very well for us in the past three hires. It's a process that we sort of work. I don't know exactly when we may start using him. We may start using him September 20th. I have to talk to the lieutenant to find out when does everything line up for us. And on the air side of caution, I don't want to have to come back here and say, I'm off a week. Can we start him early? I have enough trust in that I can do what we have to do and we move forward. It's worked very well. Thank you. Yeah. Kathleen. Janet, uh, Madam Chair, through you to uh, Helen. This is um, something that uh, Truro does, Provincetown does. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confident that, um, you know, this young man will have, um, you know, a, a mentor while he's, you know, going through the, the throes of training. Um, my concern, Officer Allen, is are you living in Sandwich now? No, ma'am. I'm renting out of East Ham, a room, so the commute's very short. Don't Good. Thank you. Great. Mm. Any other questions? I will say that September is only six weeks away. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> so it's going to, yeah. So to get this out of the way, and it's not starting till then. Any other questions? Okay, may I have a motion? I move to appoint Michael D. Allen as a full-time police officer from September 1st, 2019 through August 31st, 2020. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you've been here, though, but yes, thank you. <laughs> so at the suggestion of someone we know, um, I'm going to start moving all the appointments unless there's someone we don't know or there's some um, question a board member might have about a person or the appointment, okay? Um, so when we, uh, we have uh, Shellfish Advisory Board being Thomas Sigia and David Seitler, who we have much contact with, Zoning Board of Appeals, Trevor Pombrian, and the Cultural Council, Madeline Intel and Michelle Olam. And so what I would like to do is have somebody move all of them appointments unless you disagree or have a comment about someone. Well, do you want us to read? Read off the emotions? Uh, I yeah, all it. together, yeah. I, uh, well, I, well, I just did it. Madam Chair? Yes. The, the, the appointment of uh, the two members of the Shellfish Advisory Board is a little different than the others. It's not exactly a reappointment. So <coughs> can I do that separately quickly? Yes. Yes. I move to appoint uh, Tom Sigia, Sigia and David Seidler to the Shellfish um, Regulatory Board as regular members. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay, where's Tom? Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, through you, mm -hmm. through Helen. Regulatory Board, it says Advisory Board. Oops, oh, yeah. Shellfish we, Advisory Board. We are, regulatory we are board. Re he's a regular member, yes. but he's not a uh, regulatory board. Uh, uh, so do you want to amend what that, you please? Said, I'm so sorry. I move to appoint Tom's uh, Sigia and David Seitler as regular members to the Shellfish Advisory Board. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay. All in favor of the amendment, amended vote. Okay, yeah. thank you. They've both served as uh, alternate members for some years. Yes. Yeah, and they, I know they do have a lot. So then um, the appointment of Trevor Pombrian, and I know that he's been on and off the planning board as an associate member and as a regular member. So, um, uh, and actually Michelle Olam and um, Maddie, Maddie and Tell are coming back onto the Cultural Council. So okay, they're, they're Chair, known entities. Um, just wanna say Trevor, we got two outstanding letters for uh, one from Bruce Drucker and the other from Sharon Inger. Um, thrilled that you're going to do this. I've been to several ZBA hearings and listened to your findings and find that your professional background brings a lot to the table. So I move to appoint Trevor Prontrion to the regular member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. May we know the term? 
Doesn't say. Doesn't say it. Oh, so it's. Um, do you know the Three term? Three-year overlapping terms. It, you're, yeah, you're not replacing anybody. Are you replacing? No. You're not replacing Roger. Roger. Well, I'm replacing Roger. So yeah. Three-year three term. Okay. Actually, we don't know if. I don't know that term. Yeah. Because All right. That, for so, yeah. How about amend it to include the you know for whatever yeah. term. Uh, yeah. Allowed. Or the something like do that. Refer sounds... to the term, please. Just uh, for the term designated of three years in the office. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. I know you somebody work hard. I always hear good, good, uh, Did somebody good things about that? you. Uh, Justina did. Yeah. Justina did. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So now uh, moving on to Madeline and Tell and Michelle Olam. May I have a motion? I move uh, to appoint uh, Madeline Entel and Michelle Olam to the Cultural Council for three-year terms. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, moving right along. We now have use of town property. Uh, Catherine Weeks is postponing her request to use town property. So we do not have that tonight. And now we have uh, Big Wave Productions. Anyone here from Big Wave Productions? Are you here? That's what I was kind of assuming. Would you like to come up to the mic or the table just because uh, you have kind of a interesting yeah, offer and you could maybe give, so we're on TV so you can give, the, um, give a quick briefing on what you're planning on doing. Right. Um, and state your name too, please. Yeah, my name's Greg Skomel. I'm a fisheries oh. biologist with the Division of Marine Fisheries. Um, I do not work for Big, Big Wave Productions, but I'm familiar with what they're proposing, and they're an overseas company and obviously could not be here, so I'm here to help with any questions you might have. But the, the short story is uh, we're conducting quite a bit of research on the white sharks off the coast of Cape Cod, both uh, in Cape Cod Bay and on the outer Cape. It's a continuation of our work we've been doing for about 10 years now, and we'll be using a variety of technologies to look very specifically at the predator-prey relationship between sharks and seals in an effort to get a better understanding of patterns in shark behavior. Um, the Big Wave Production Company, uh, which I have worked with on other documentaries, has come to us and asked if they can document the work we're doing and characterize the shark-seal uh, interactions and the, and the research that are, is going on with the very science-based production. Um, but also, as we all know, the, uh, the shark seal issue has uh, generated quite a bit of media and public attention, and I suspect they'll also be covering those aspects of it in this film. So I'll, I'll gladly uh, embellish on any aspects of that, but also answer questions well, as best I'm, I can. I'm glad you're here, because I was concerned that it may be more exploitive or TV-esque or something, so I'm glad, you know, that they, they will be respectful of science the based. science of our town, of the water and everything. So good. Great. Yeah, I mean, that's of a, that's a paramount importance to me. Yes. I can tell you I've worked with this production on, on nine other films, um, and it's really critically important that they emphasize objective research and not embellish. Yes. Um, so that's critical to my reputation as well as, as it is to the, the entire Cape Cod community. Yeah. Good, thank you. Any questions, Justine? Uh, Justine? Yeah, quickly, I want to echo what Janet said. Um, well, first of all, this sounds great, and secondly, thanks for being such a serious scientist associated with the project. But I did have a quick qualm about sensationalizing the topic, and we're not going to hear like Jaws music and fake blood in the water and uh, that and doesn't so forth. no no. And I I absolutely appreciate that. And I've talked with the executives at Discovery Communications mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. because they have final say. And I told them that I would not participate if it begins to go in that direction. I'll walk off, you know. And I don't need this either. Yeah. I will tell you that they do support the research financially, mm -hmm. and that's an incentive for me. They are purchasing equipment that we will use during the film. But if it's going to result in my reputation going downhill or uh, embellishment that will reflect poorly on the Cape, then I'm not interested. Great. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you for explaining that. Madam Anyone Chair. else? Um, yes. So um, I'm aware of your research, and I respect it.
but I also have had an experience within my own family, uh, not my immediate family, of uh, somebody going into a film project and making a commitment to have it be one way. And then the deciders, the producers, the people in charge of the film project, turned it into something very ugly and sensational. Nobody at the table has any idea what I'm talking about, but I can tell them later. And it was not a happy thing. And one of the most important things you just said was that you would say to them, hey, if this is, you, you start looking at what the cuts are and what they're doing with it, and if it turns into a sensational thing, which is always something that sells films, that you wouldn't want to be associated with it. But in the meantime, Wellfleet will have committed itself to being known in the film as a place where we have sharks. And we've done a lot of work into keeping people's heads about this. And you have helped because you have spoken about sharks in the neighborhood and you have written about sharks. But I'm a little bit worried that this production company might take away the flavor and the intent of this film from you and just use you as a kind of sidebar. And I want to know if there's anything in your, your understanding of their business that would lead you to believe, given past things they've done, are you familiar with other things they've done, that they might go in that direction? Well, as I said, I've, I've worked with them for yeah, ten times. at least yeah. ten, years, 10 years, and I've yeah. made I've nine other that. films with them. I've heard that, but do you feel that they might... Uh, if I know. felt that way, I wouldn't work with them. Yeah. Okay, well, I thank you. I think you explained that, yes. Helen. And I was just pinning you down about it again because that would be our, my concern, at least. And, and it's a legitimate concern. You know, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with this production company, I, I, I can understand that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Justine, uh, Kathleen. Oh, I wanna thank you for coming here tonight. I've always wanted to meet you, so. Oh. <laughs> Just seen the back of your head off a boat, but. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm, I'm happy to come and present. I've done this, um, our research findings to other, you know, select boards. And so uh, it's a pleasure to, to meet you as well and, and to uh, offer our services as best we can. We're spread very thin and we're doing what we can, but. Um, we appreciate the support from Wellfleet. Uh, Suzanne has been fantastic, Dan. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate the help. Well, it's Glad important, right? You. We know how important it is, so thank you. So any questions about the actual uh, work that they're gonna be doing, or may I have a motion? I think I can have a motion, right? Yeah. I move yeah. to approve the use of Newcomb Hollow Beach, Cahoon Hollow Beach, and the Wellfleet Town and Harbor areas between July 17th and July 28th and August 18th and August 30th, 2019 by Big Wave Productions slash Discovery Channel subject to the conditions, if any, as listed on the application form for a minimum fee of $1,000. Second. All in favor? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We'll, we'll see you. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, okay, so business. Uh, there's a request by the recycling committee. It was at town meeting about um, banning in the municipal, with municipal use, plastic bottle reduction. And this is uh, to refer this to the other committees in town. Um, I don't think, anyone here from the plastic? No. no. They are, yeah, I was wondering if Elaine was. So, um, any questions from the audience about this? Any questions from um, Kathleen? Yeah, Madam Chair, I want to say that um, the 45th annual 5K road race was run on Sunday morning and it was done without plastic. Um, it was uh, uh, something we didn't think we would be able to do this season, um, but it went very well. There was a, a whole uh, lineup of volunteers handing out water and paper cups, and um, we had a, a cooler day than ex normally has been in the, in the past, so this worked. 
But for the audience, I want to say with regard to this policy, it does not Sorry. apply during a declaration of emergency adversely affecting the availability and or the quality of drinking water by the town, Commonwealth, or the United States. The select board policy excludes all town departments when engaged in public safety operations. This policy may be temporarily, temporarily waived by the select board for specific circumstances where there is no viable alternative to use single plastic containers. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to use it as much as we can, but um, in a state of an emergency or firefighters fighting a fire, um, you know, there's a possibility there will be plastic bottles. I was so. going to say firefighters can't use plastic b water bottles to put the fire out. But no, they can't. We need a little hot humor here. Yes, Ms. Thomas. <clears throat> I have a question about the use of plastic bottles by groups in this building who are not here for town-sponsored activities but are using the building. Very often they will bring in single-serve water bottles for their audience, for their participants. Are we um, now, would you want us to say they can't do that? I mean, I, I just, I need guidance. I, I, I think it's, personally, I think it's time, and I think everybody will understand, but I think also we're going to have to ease into this, let people know. I mean, if they all show up with water bottles and you say you can't have them, you know. Well, we could, we could add it to our building use information package. Yeah, I, package. I mean, I, I feel like it's would... time to start getting rid of plastic water bottles everywhere. So we can only start with municipal buildings. Yeah, Janet, Kathleen, can I, did I you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I'll answer a little bit of that in that. Um, this policy is asking the town not to, the, uh, the municipality, mm -hmm. um, whether it's the DPW or um, the Recreation Department, Human Services, not to purchase water in plastic bottles. It doesn't mean people that are using our facilities um, have to abide by that, but the town itself will not be procur procuring water in plastic bottles. Okay. As I understand this from the recycling committee. All right. Uh, I would like to point out that thanks to the DPW, we do have a water bottle refilling station in this building. I thought you did. What's we up do there? have it. It's right out there. Yeah. You want more? You want another one? No, no. We, I was just going to say that thanks to the DPW, we have one. Oh, you have one. And okay. Thank you. I yeah. encourage people to bring their refillable water bottles with them. Hopefully they're they not plastic, there. but yeah. Yeah. Not single use, refillable. Yeah. 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 No, and I think uh, I think we'll m move f forward with this. So is this? Um, yes, go ahead. A couple things. I policies are great, but general bylaws are even better. And I sort of wish this was a general bylaw. But never mind. We've got it on the books. Yeah. And I hope would hope that in this kind of situation, also at the library, that you know the administrators, the directors, would just simply reach out to the people that use it and say, we want to change this policy. I mean, we want to change to, you know, this kind of use. We have really good water. Bring your own bottle and refill it. And, you know, we're trying to encourage this. But, I mean, what Kathleen said is accurate. Yeah. It's, you know, it's only 10. And emergency. we'll ask Lieutenant Hurley, will anyone be arrested? <laughs> Oh, you're still here. Okay, I didn't see you. I, oh, right. What are you doing on the on that side of the room? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm only kidding. It doesn't have to be Ed, but yeah, I think um, everybody is beginning to understand um, to end to head that way. So, can I have a motion to uh, refer this to other committees? I move that the board vote that the policy recommended by the recycling committee and the 2019 annual town meeting voters through Article 46 is worthy of formulation as a policy according to the select board's policy on policy and that the town administrator be directed to send it to department heads and other appropriate members of town government for review and comment. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay, unanimous, thank you. Um, uh, can I just say one more? Yes, thing? you may. Um, I learned on Sunday at the road race um, from someone who's um, 
um, like a marine biologist, that every single uh, water, bottled water, on the market, whether it was uh, Poland Spring, Aquafina, every single bottled water on the market had been tested by um, a group out on the West Coast, and every single one of them tested positive from microplastics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carcinogens, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, I was just, yeah, anyway. Yep. Nope, it's time. Okay, so now we're moving on to the rental assistant fund request. Housing Authorities Rental Assistance Fund request. Are you here for that, Elaine? Do you want to come up and explain it, please, for the audience? Thank you. Um, the rental assistance program is, is a really important component of the Wellfleet uh, Housing Authority's overall um, approach to our housing needs. And it's been going uh, since we did a pilot project with CPA funds in 2007, and it has been consistently funded with CPA funds since then. At one point, uh, three years ago, um, at the urging of Paul Pilcher, we did ask for some supplemental funding through the C CDBG program income that at that point, um, per Alice Boyd, was to be used only for housing or economic development. Um, the reason it's so important is uh, we have a zero percent rental vacancy in Wellfleet, so keeping people in the rentals that they have is really important. Our housing needs, needs assessment showed that over 550 of our renters in town are cost burdened, spending too much of their income on their rent. And of those, 44% are seniors, 21% are families, and 35% are individuals that are not seniors. And until there's more affordable rentals available in our area, and we hope more are coming soon to our whole region. Uh, we want to keep this program going. Unfortunately, we have come to a fork in the road, and we are running out of funds and did not, um, we missed the ball on requesting more funding through CPA at this year's town meeting. Um, we are submitting an application if by any chance there's a fall town meeting, and if not, it'll be in for the spring town meeting. So um, we know that the uses for the CDGB fund have changed, um, but I'm hoping um, if there is money available and in the spirit of how it came to the town, um, you might consider uh, our $25,000 request for this purpose. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hort, do you wanna address this as far as funds go? No, I'm, I'm in support of this, this okay. transfer. Okay, we, we yeah. have the transfer? Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, first, I'd like to apologize for being so late. I had a vehicle breakdown Ooh. issue on the other side of the bridge, so Ooh. it took me a while to get back. <laughs> um, but the uh, question I have is, um, the funding that's received by renters, is there like a sunset on that? Do they receive funding for a certain amount of time and then stop receiving funding at some point? Um, the funding actually goes directly to landlords. Um, and it's um, people are usually approved for a year with the review at the end of the first year. Um, at the same time, they work with the Homeless Prevention Council to make sure they're working towards sustainability if they're, you know, which if they, if they need the rental assistance, they do need some support for right. changing things. So um, the maximum for the most part has been up to three years. Um, we've had success with people after one year. We've had people at three years that it's a flexible program. We've kept them going for a little longer. Um, right, okay. But, it, but it, it does. And we have, there's a 12 page application they fill out, it's reviewed. It's now administered by the Homeless Prevention Council so that everybody that gets this, gets their case management services, 
they recommend to us the client and the funding, um, which has really been helpful to have. I mean, we've always asked people to sign up with them because we want people to get all the, the resources available, um, but now it's, a re it's an absolute requirement. Okay. I know that there's no um, set number, but in general, what would you say are the subsidies? It says 400 to 800. Oh, yeah, oh, it does? The, I was looking yeah, for that. I thought it yeah. did. And over the course of the okay. 10 years, we, we have served between 7 and 10 households per month. Um, we've worked with over 40 landlords and helped close to 60 households. And uh, for the most part, it, it's really been helpful. Some seniors, it's given them the gap until they could get Social Security. A lot of, we, we ask everybody to get on to the different housing lists so people have gotten into affordable housing situations in other towns. Um, some people have gotten the help they need to get on disability. So it's, it's kind of a helping step when someone yeah. is having you know, some, some difficulties but working to try to improve the situation. Kathleen? Yeah, Elaine, as I recall um, when this came out, uh, originally with Paul Pilcher, um, it was primarily a tool um, used during the winter months. Is that still the case? No. Or is it more year-round? It was always year-round. At one point, um, we were working with the CDP, and they suggested some people might just need some help through the winter. Yeah. And we did a little bit of that. I mean, the beauty is that it's our own program. It has flexibility. So we can... We, we just worked with a, a wonderful young woman who was going to school, and we helped her for three months, and then she got a great job and didn't need it anymore. So it's all kinds of situations. Yeah, there's great yeah. success stories. Um, Justina? Uh, through, through you, Madam Chair, to Elaine. And I read here that um, you've had uh, this funding previously. It's been funded by the select board previously, so you were asking uh, for for another transfer this year, right? So it's a transfer of funds um, rather than an additional expenditure for the town. Is that correct, Mr. Hort? <coughs> it's a transfer. Yeah. So yeah. so it's a previously approved and it's a transfer. So that makes me comfortable with it. Any other questions? Yeah. So um, the homeless uh, prevention council is sort of an outside vetting review organization, right? Right. Which in, ensures a kind of fairness. Right. Yeah, so the, yeah. they just look at the criteria. They don't do it because somebody knows somebody. Um, so that's really wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, may I have a motion? I move to approve the transfer of $25,000 to the CPA Housing Now Fund to fund the re rental assistance program. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this, um, I want you can you can go if you want. I just want to also mention we got with this um, information um, a request and a don't if you want to donate to the Wellfleet Housing Buy Down Program. Um, the Housing Authority does have what's the name of our fund? The Wellfleet Housing, the Wellfleet Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, takes donations, very important to help people stay in their houses or find houses. Um, and also the Brackett Road uh, development in East Ham is now taking applications, right? Can you know I tell that? you that our sixth buy down is closing at the end of this month? That's so great. That's mm. Six yeah. modest houses that are saved to be affordable in perpetuity. So do you wanna explain that program a little bit? So again, people on uh, TV and at home okay. and can hear. Um, the buy down is what was another pilot program with CPA funds. Um, started about five years ago. At that time, we gave a grant of $125,000 to buy down the cost of a home. We're in, when in essence, we are in essence buying the deed restriction. Um, so um, this year we're up to having two um, award $175,000 to make the homes affordable. Um, there are limits. We, we have to go by HUD limits. So um, you, we're always looking for houses that are priced 
under $400,000, or I think 325 is the highest for a one bedroom, 355 for a two, and 401 or something like that for a three bedroom. Um, once, for most people, once the buy down is applied, their mortgage is about as much as they were paying for rent. So they do have their additional property taxes that they're paying, but um, we just feel it's a really good fit for our town because it's scattered site housing. We've never had any complaints about the buy down and we're saving modest homes and allowing our local people that have real skills to improve them and, um, and they do stay affordable in perpetuity. Yeah. And these are CPA funds, Community Preservation Act funds. We also have this, the, the most recent one we funded with money from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Great. We had Good. two excellent candidates. We didn't want to have a lottery. So we used the CPA funds plus some uh, trust funds for the, the fifth one and then all, all housing trust funds for the second one. Great. Thank you. It's working a lot. Thank you, Elaine, for all your hard work. Thanks. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Shellfish industry letter of support. Uh, I think we're going to postpone these. Um, Ginny Parker has written a letter, uh, but she, we haven't gotten it yet. And Helen has written a letter, but we got it, got it late. So we'll uh, look at the letters, and then we can send them both in. But Yeah, yeah no, so just to update for all of us, and Mike was on the board. <coughs> so uh, back when uh, the Wellfleet Shell Fishermen's Association wrote their own letter, and uh, some of you, I think Ginny was here, certainly maybe some other people, came to us and said, you know, we want your support. We want you, you know, to support this letter. And I felt supportive of it, but I said, you know, uh, strength in numbers. Shellfish committee should write their own letter. You know, select board should write their own letter. How about the NRAB? You know, they might weigh in. And then WSA, the Wealthy Shell Fishermen's Association. And then I said, I will have drafted a letter for us to look at on the, our next meeting, which is March 9th. Okay, I didn't do that. But a couple things. Um, this bill is now in committee. It's in the first committee. It's in the committee, uh, Joint Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Agriculture. And it's going to be there for a while. But although they may not get to it for months, we should, you know, maybe by our next meeting, we can all look at what I've drafted. Yeah, we, which is I just, we'll, uh, do, we'll handle a it little the next different meeting. from what came from the Wellfleet Shell Fishermen's Association, which is good because we want to cover it from different perspectives. But it doesn't in any way controvert that. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, uh, it includes the concerns. And it's interesting. I spoke with Chris Scalacci today in drafting it just to be sure about a couple of facts. And one of the most interesting thing, the most convincing thing, to not have this bill succeed is that with the language we now have under state law, another municipality could enact what this bill proposes themselves. In other words, they could decide that in their municipality, licenses, according to Chris Scalacci, he and I looked at the language very carefully, could be sold. Mm -hmm. We just don't want to do that. Right. And for me, this is a classic land use issue that it should suit where we are and our industry and our resource. And every other regulatory board for land use in Massachusetts gets to do that locally. We do not want this laid on us across the board throughout the Commonwealth. So my letter dealt with, deals with this. It acknowledges that money sometimes does change hands. And I'm hoping that we all have a chance to read it and we can you know, discuss it and maybe approve it at the next meeting, depending on how we feel, okay? Yeah, I yeah. would right. venture to guess this is very important to the board. Uh, yes. Jenny Parker. Um, a couple things that we have discovered since the, we first had this discussion in February, and it seems as, and I would like the board to consider 
Um, also reaching out to on a county level to the other select boards here on the Cape because we're realizing that um, the governing bodies in the other towns really don't understand this bill and what's happening like Wellfleet does. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to take a leadership role on that level too. And any way we can help in that effort, we're, we're here for you. So, Madam Chair? Uh, yes. I have a copy list as long as my arm mm -hmm. if once the board decides whether or not we want to send it. And, you know, I also had an exchange with Sarah Peake's, um, you know, staff about procedures for this and got sent who to send it on that committee. Because we can send um, this letter to individuals on the committee. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. And yeah. I think everybody should be copied with it if we agree on the content. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, okay, approval of end of year budget transfers. Any questions on this? Mm. Oh, Kathleen, yep. On the um, survey of the Hilta Trust property, mm -hmm. fifteen thousand dollar thousand uh, dollar. I'm just astounded. Yeah. I mean, is that normal? When I looked at. Previous times we had paid for a survey, it's not that unusual. Okay. Madam Chair? Uh, yes, um, Michael. I think also the nature of surveying that area to mean low water is uh, fairly challenging. It's not like property bounds where you survey to a I'm marked aware. boundary. Yeah, it's just yeah, a so, yeah. bunch of money. Yeah. Yeah, which, and we can talk about that <clears throat> next week also, I mean, next meeting. Just as an FYI, I also, I reached out to some appraisers today to try and get some quotes. Um, so far, everybody I've called has said we can't do that because we haven't done that. We don't have that experience but, dealing yeah. with that type of a property before. So, um, but one did give me some additional references of people he thought would be able to do it. But yeah. it's so I have a feeling we're going to be a little bit surprised or shocked by the cost of doing that as well. So, and then again, the legal costs for Hilta fifteen thousand dollars. Jesus, yeah. That's for both for for Hilta and uh, we just prepared and the MOU for, and that was about ten thousand dollars to do that. So. Just the MOU? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair? Yes. So um, not to, you know, uh, inhibit the board's uh, function. Okay, remember but you're on camera. Yes. No, uh, sorry. See. Not to not to hinder the board's function. Mm -hmm. But in a situation <coughs> like this where something I'm formally recused from comes up, I'm not going to, if it comes up like this out of the blue for me, I am not going to get up and recuse and go out of the room but I will not say anything at all about it. And I just need to make that statement now because now there have been two times when it's come yeah. up like this. Okay? You're saying something about it now. No, but I'm yeah. not I furthering know. the I know. transaction. We, we understand that. Okay. Um, okay, can I have a motion to approve the end of the year budget transfers? Uh, Are I'm there any questions from the audience? <coughs> Boy, okay. Go I ahead. move to approve the end of the year budget transfers. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? I'm okay, thank recused. you. Okay. Yep. And now, um, oh. so we're going to move on to uh, Selectman's goals. And I don't know if Mike, I meant to call you, but every year around this time, Selectman come up with some goals. There's usually maybe three to five that you might have. Um, they might be a pet project of yours or something you think needs to be taken on um, or something that needs to be fixed or something that was suggested 10 or 15 years ago that hasn't been done. So um, we're just looking at them tonight and then in, over the next month or two we'll firm them up and see what we want to do. Um, anybody want uh, to comment on previous goals or what what they want to work on? Well, Madam Chair, I, I, I'm not sure what the 
process is uh, now that Jerry Houck is not on the select board, do we remove his initials from? This is just preliminary. By the time we finish or? this up in, in uh, August or September, okay. um, there, there will be this board's goals. Okay. But we would, you know, if somebody wants to take on what Jerry mentioned, you know, town should purchase a dredge, that's already in the works. Um, yeah, and I'll yeah. also say that the uh, determination of feasibility for housing at 95 Lawrence Road has been completed with the feasibility yeah. study. Yeah, yeah. So that you can check that one off. So the idea here so is sure. that each of you will um, send to Courtney or myself um, what you would like to see your goals be for FY20. And then we'll take these all and, and assimilate them and put them together and bring them back forward to you as a group okay. to see if that's what you agree you want your goals to be for FY20. So if you see, for example, something that um, was important to Jerry Houck, um, you could bring that forward again as a, as a goal that you want to keep on our list of goals. So this one is going to be the goals that you select, but if you see something in FY19 that you want to keep on there, you certainly can do that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, Helen. So two things about this, um, somewhat from Mike, but Mike probably already gets it. This is a moment where we give the town administrator a little general direction mm -hmm. about what we care about. And it's very important because of that, so that the town administrator isn't just kind of moving forward in the dark in a reactive way, you know, to whatever comes up. I mean, there's enough of that already. The second thing is what we did last year and have done in previous years that I've been on the board, I really like, which is this, which was for last year, right, up until the end of July, or was it the end of June? God, I don't even know when the fiscal year ends. It ends at the end of June, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, okay, not completely clueless. But um, what we did last year is we all submitted our goals, all five of us. And we all got to see them. And of course, that's public document. You know, it, it's part of our packet. And then there was a summary. So I really want to do that again. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I don't that's want cool. just a summary and a rephrasing on a summary sheet. I want my exact language and I want to see Kathleen's exact language. Yeah. Not because I mistrust the summary process, which we get so, to, so in, but because yeah. I really want to hear from individuals in our meeting process. Yeah, and we will do that. It's only the beginning of June, and I think last year we did this until the yeah. mid-September even, second finalized. But yeah, we'll show, we'll give feedback. Yeah. We'll see if somebody else has a good idea, we'll go with it. So it takes a little while. And you're not only giving this to me as town administrator, you're giving it to your entire staff mm -hmm. to basically yeah. say, you know, what are you doing to help the selectmen achieve their goals? So. And is this going to be posted online? This might be a good thing to put on the town website. It's already there, I think. It's there. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. Um, does anybody want to discuss them now a little briefly? Because we have, we're moving just right along tonight. That is very nice that we're moving along. <laughs> But no? Oh. No. No. Nope. I think no. it'd be most productive to review. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, moving on to employee contracts. Any questions? I, question. I just I have to, <clears throat> this is one of, these are two people that I'm really proud of. Um, they are Wellfleet residents. They stepped up to a challenge we were able to promote from within in this circumstance, and they've both thrived in this position, and it's, I'm really proud of both of them of what they've done, and it's really, in, in the ideal world, this is exactly how it should work. Question? Mm -hmm. um, through you. Mm -hmm. So is there anything, yeah, it's all good, and I've had good experiences already with both of them. Good. So, but, um, is there anything in either one of these uh, con contracts, employment agreements, that is notably different uh, from the former? No, I copied the exact it's agreement from, okay, from before. Thank you. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kathleen? Um, is the pay grade the same? 
They're both the same, yes. They're, what I did is I started them out just a little bit lower in their first year, but I gave them a, a larger increase in years two and three as they gain experience. Okay. Um, that wasn't here, so uh, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, Justina? It's not a question. Um, it's just a compliment to Dan for motivating these two individuals. I'm uh, kind of the chatty type, so I've had a few chats, and I see two motivated people in town hall. Good point. Um, mm -hmm. uh, eager to take on more and take, some, take it on, take yeah. some classes. So you've really brought some nice changes to town hall, and it's really nice to see. Good. May I have a motion? I move to approve the town treasurer contract and authorize the town administrator to sign the contract. Uh, but put That's them both together. And I also move to approve the town collector contract and authorize the town administrator to sign the contract. That's B. Is there second? a second? All in favor? Okay, great. Good job, people. Um, and now we have the select board reports. Kathleen has a report. Anybody else have one that they just want to say what happened this week? On uh, July 1st, um, the 95 Lawrence Road Task Force met at the site and walked the property. Um, this was to envision a site plan uh, for future housing. Um, everyone that attended uh, that site walk um, agreed. Um, it's just a terrific property to, um, you know, to see housing uh, on. Um, we convened a regular meeting after that site walk with Laura Schufelt, who's leading the task force committee for the RFP, and she's going to bring in um, an engineer uh, to help us now kind of construct a, uh, a site plan yeah. for 95 Lawrence Road. Uh, very exciting. I'm going to, re you know, report everything that we do going forward. And are there um, representatives from the planning board, the zoning board, and the pertinent boards, or is it a? We have Andy Freeman from the planning board. We have Jan Plowey from the school committee. Yep. Um, we have um, um, Laura Schufelt from uh, um, Hack, who's really mm -hmm. top shelf. Um, yeah, it's good. Great. Any um, questions for Kathleen? Okay. Any any other selectmen want to have any report or something like that? All right. Moving on to the town administrator's report. Any questions? <clears throat> I'll just give you a little bit of an update. Um, I've interviewed four people for the assistant town administrator position. I expect I'll probably have a, <coughs> my recommendation for an appointment to you, which I will uh, submit to you um, sometime this week. So um, we were, Great. I think, very fortunate that there were a lot of really good people that we interviewed. Um, I don't think I could go wrong with any one of them, so that's a nice position to be in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, well, who are me. you, Helen? Yeah, I don't know. I'm a person. I'm sitting at the table. Um, how many people applied? Um, it actually got higher than that. We got over 30 applicants. I think we got 32 applicants. How many cuts did you make? I'm just interested. I, we did the first cut, which we cut it down to six people. And then when we contacted people, some had already accepted another position or felt that they weren't the right person for the position. So that's when we got to the four interviews. Yeah, I'm not trying to micromanage. No, it sure. just interests me. Yeah. Yep. yeah, thank you. All right, any, other, uh, any questions on the um, town administrator's report? Okay, uh, correspondence. Oh, I didn't go. Okay, that's okay. Um, I, we did get correspondence from Carol Ridley of the Herring River Restoration Project, and I will briefly, um, this too is on our town website, and I assume that um, Ms. Baumgarten's uh, recitation last week was also put up on the recit I never on the received it. You never got it? I never received it. 
received it and I asked Mia to contact her. Oh, that's, her. yeah, that's right, because it was handwritten. That's right, okay. Um, well, so this is an answer to her um, comments, but I just want to very briefly say that there were a number of comments that required a response. This is from Carol Ridley, the project coordinator of the Herring River. Um, the, um, Ms. Baumgarten claimed that there was, um, with Truro, that they pulled out of the agreement, the Herring River contract, because of um, liability, liability. And um, there's, and Ray Ann Palmer, the town administrator, confirmed that this is true, that that's not true, but what the, I'm gonna read is true, that um, Truro's intention to establish a new role as an interested municipal stakeholder, fully supportive of the ecological restoration objectives of the project. And the resolution also states that Truro will provide indications of support for the project as appropriate in the context of permitting proceedings and grant applications, among other cooperative actions. Uh, there is no evidence, <clears throat> uh, Ms. Baumgarten claims there's no evidence that potential benefits of the project can be achieved. And um, Ms. Ridley replies that analysis as compiled in the project's final environmental impact statement report, uh, and that too is available. That was a very lengthy, concise scientific report. Um, the project is the result of more than three decades of scientific study. Ms. Baumgarten said there is no peer-reviewed evidence, um, and, and there is. So you've got to kind of look at the right places and go to the right meetings. Um, and that's really all I need. I need that there are, there, you know, I just want to dispel the misinformation out there. And this is on, this will be, this is online, right? So please read it. And I'm sure there'll be another Herring River meeting. M Madam this Chair. This summer, yes. So this document, because Carol Ridley's response to the errors in Ms. Baumgarten's, um, presentation, what she read out, um, didn't happen during that meeting. This was a correspondence that came in after that. So this document should be included with this set of minutes, yep. not the previous one. Mm -hmm. And okay. I greatly appreciate that she did it. Um, I was particularly concerned, having sat through these meetings now for years, and being aware that right now there's yet another stage of peer group review happening that she said that there had been none. It really, yeah, it, really it, shocked me. And also, the thing is, uh, those of us on the executive uh, council, that's me and Janet and Dan, are aware that there, there were a whole lot of other concerns. And they had a lot to do with just something as benign as we don't have that much being involved, Truro not having that much involved, and you know, it's time, you know, and we want to, you know, support it, but we don't want to participate in this to that extent. And liability may have been part of it for them, but it certainly wasn't the main reason in my in right. my. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, Kathleen? Uh, I'm just going to add that um, the uh, presentation that was made um, by Ms. Baumbarton has not changed. Um, um, not changed. Over the years. Over the years. Yeah. Um, I've heard it many times. Um, we can refute it many times. I'm glad Ms. Ridley has written a letter to refute some very specific misinformation. And um, I agree with Helen. Um, there was very little of this project um, taking place in Truro, so it just made sense yeah. for them to kind of exit stage left. But it doesn't mean that they're not supportive of this environmental restoration, so. Right. Yep. And really, any time there's some anger or confusion, you know, my advice is to just go really read or go to the meetings to dispel the misinformation that you have. Um, it's all there. Okay, uh, minutes. What topics for future concern? Oh. oh yeah, I always miss that, don't I? Topics for future concern? Uh, we take care of them anyhow. Anything coming up? 
I just yes. want to make sure we get a working meeting on the calendar. Um, I know it's summer. Uh, yeah. People are feeling summer burned out. We could, I mean, even September, but I think we have a lot of issues and um, it brings us together as a board to have a work meeting. I think we kept it to one hour one time, too. Yeah. And what, do you have a topic in particular? Yes, I have. Um, I think we could review some of uh, the concerns we've heard about transparency and trust, for example, as a debrief, and um, you know, just look constructively at some okay. of the feedback. I, I would like to have a working meeting on um, our what we want to do with the marijuana regulations before yes. it's too late. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Get yeah. it and on paper. Yeah, um, so that will be part of our formally, you know, um, our policy on policies. That will be a work meeting <coughs> that will be initiate the process. In other Thank words, you for clarifying that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I yeah. the intention. Yeah, we yeah. will start the work meeting so that we can then present the larger policy to to our yeah. <clears throat> to the selectmen's meeting. And we yes, did Mike. that with a plastic thing tonight mm -hmm. yeah but I think that it deserves a work meeting because there's so much stuff about it so you're in favor good oh sure yeah good Mike I just want to say at the work meeting there's no reason we can't set a policy yeah, um, we that no. we can bring yeah. to the town so yeah. I think it would be helpful to come to the work meeting with the idea that we can come up with a policy there so we leave with a policy that we kind of agree on, and then if we want to bring it to another meeting to yeah. vote on it, then yeah. then that's good. But I, I, like, I'm hesitant to have a work meeting where we just talk and yeah. then come no, back no, no, to no. a meeting and then talk again. Like, I want to get to a point where we come to some resolution about yes. what our policy is going to yes. be, and then craft the policy. Yeah, craft the policy in the work meeting. Then we, if we want to bring it, it forward before before a uh, public hearing, before we vote on accepting it, that's fine, but I would like to, if we're gonna have a work meeting about it, I'd like to leave that work meeting with a policy like I agree. settled. Yeah. yeah. Or, or As much Chair, as we can. Yeah, or identify the last issues to be nailed. Yes. Like, c come out with action items, Shh. ideally a policy. If not, yeah. then well, four questions and whatever. Yeah, I just think we could talk ourselves into like, a whole if we just keep going yeah. on without actually setting a policy and I, I don't think I, I, think, I think that the work that, meetings yeah. are the perfect place to actually mm -hmm. sort of like hone get it in. going yeah. get it right. going Madam and we Chair. all ha we all have um, <coughs> from um, at least from May um, uh, the town administrator gave us a little packet on uh, things that Koppelman and Page has said about it and what we and there's other there's other things online to read about other North Attleboro if you want to go online has a very good policy a new policy um, so come with your ideas about what you want to uh, do with it uh, Kath, uh, God I keep calling you Kathleen it's okay. whatever I'm Sorry. honored to be called <laughs> Kathleen but maybe <laughs> Kathleen doesn't feel the same way okay you can call me anything you want so two things Mike yep. we ha read the policy on policy. I read the policy on yeah. policy. Okay. We have to do it in two stages. Sure, I'm yeah. just saying. He's just I, bringing wait, wait, it right. let me okay. finish, and I agree with you. I would like to get to language at the work meeting. But let's not forget, work meetings are pretty much anything we want them to be, except hearings. You see what I mean? In other yeah. words, we yeah, can we do see. actual yeah. legitimate select board work. I hope we're going to be videoed. I really don't want any more work meetings that aren't videoed after our recent experience where we lost Hillary's workshop level seminar and history of the 208 plan. I have that on. I have it on audio recording. If you do, yes, I've had yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's yeah. Yeah, okay. but they stay audio recorded until you approve the final minutes, and then they're deleted. Those minutes have not been approved yet. I don't think. So yeah, I except that. that now they're going to be. Done. But the point is, the public doesn't get to see it anyway. Long story yeah. short, work meetings are good because there are these extra meetings where we can get to stuff and not have to. So yes, yeah, so that's why we're doing it. So that's why we're doing it, and yeah. we all agree on good. that, right? 
So we don't okay. have to talk about why we're having work meetings anymore. Okay, time okay. for supper, yes. Um, good. And so come prepared. Think well, about it. Well, can we all get some background I, I just I just said that. But that we, we we've get... had it. We can have, we can have uh, redundancy and all have more packets put out. And I recommend that you read the North Attleboro Marijuana, Marijuana Host Agreement that they put out. Maybe, maybe you can print it out, whatever. Yeah. May we Can all we be that? sent it electronically at least. So for, you know, we're talking about what we might want to have on a work meeting. If you think of something else that you'd like to yeah. see on a work meeting, please send that to yeah. Janet and then she could add it to right now. We just are basically saying, talking about transparency and trust and marijuana regulations. So I think those that's would enough for the July, hour. June, end of June, and, uh, July, June, it's already Courtney July. And Courtney is going to yeah. look at tide charts to see when it works best for I was just going to say, and, it's up to Mike to And then uh, send that. it out I mean, to I'm, a I'm proposal for, all, for each of you as to when we could meet. So. Yeah. Madam Chair, um, don't we have a work meeting that we were supposed to set up already about so? Yes. Two, yeah. sp we, two specific things that did, I can't did we, did we, we set didn't it schedule up? it because oh. I went and so I met with Dan and what we were actually going to set up ended up being the Hilta Trust purchase and sale signing. Yes, we, that's right. We actually had a time available that we could do it, but it turned into that it was just to sign yeah. up right. the but purchase. Do you and remember sale. what the the discussion for that work One, meeting? It was going to be the it, it was going to be the host agreement. It was. It was yeah. what we're going to move this some, to. And there's something so, right. else too. But yeah. the host there was something was, else also that yeah. I, I can't remember what it was. But it kind of sort of like co coincided. When I met with Dan, it was like it's going to be. It's going to wind up around the Fourth of July, and nobody's going to want to yeah. do it. So we'll we'll discuss it at the next meeting. But we got to be ready if a host if if a marijuana business comes in. We have to be yeah, ready for it. So. Agreed. I think it's and we'll still have to send it to Koppelman and Page and really look at the policy. So. Um, Good. But uh, just for the record, um, do you mind, Courtney, uh, looking up what the other topic was? Because community agreement and discuss the use of town property. Use oh, of town right. property. That, that, that was an important that's one. Right. And that Justina was, yeah. the, uh, really wants to talk about yeah. that. Too. So if we have time, we could go into that. But I think the marijuana thing is going to take a good, and the um, transparency is going to well, take a good hour or so. Yeah, I mean, Janet, through you, I don't. I mean, I think that we could have as many as a queue, you know, issues come up and then we knock the next, the, the most important ones, like the host agreement um, and transparency and trust. And then maybe in September, you know. Or mid-August even. So Whenever. yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all yeah. Yeah, plays out. But yeah, Mike, so you'll figure out a time with Courtney and Dan and stuff. Okay. And, um, yeah. So wait, Mike had his hand up. Um, I just wanted, I was just wondering if maybe we could put the use of town property on the agenda and maybe postpone it if we don't get to it, but I don't think it's going to take that long. I, so I've already personally. been working on the form and the details that I want, so yeah, I've got something kind of ready to go. So yeah. I feel like we could put it on the agenda, maybe, or maybe it could fit on the agenda All for right. the working yeah, meeting, because yeah. I, I just, yeah, and if the, we use, of agenda, property, we'll to the use of town property on the same I'm working sorry, meeting. I'm sorry, for the agenda for the next work meeting? Yeah. yeah, with the marijuana host agreements. Do well, why don't we it, put it on the, the subsequent one? Like, well, what's the your thinking on? Because I don't think we'll get it all done. Unless you want to. Well, let's put it on there, and if we, we don't get it done, it. we don't get it done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just in case. I just, it might not take that long to do the use of Brown Town Yeah, okay. Um, through you. Sounds good. Um, we all remember, and Mike basically said this you can put 10 things on an agenda, and you don't have to do anything except a hearing in other words right you we don't, know yeah, yeah we, know. we all know that so so i think it will take a long time because but, just yeah. discussing what should Chair. be at the work meeting um. is already taking 15 <laughs> minutes so i'm i wasn't done okay i want to remind us all that oh. one of the things that jump started the use of town property thing was the issue with three kendrick avenue and that we needed, uh, you know, and the use of the town property next door, and that at that meeting, one of the things that uh, was brought up was having a written agreement about the use of it as, a, you know, a formal, you know, agreement with the people that were using it, because apparently there was just something years ago where it was agreed, and we had nothing in writing now, and it's sort of an insurance liability. Madam Chair, right. point of order. 
Use of town property isn't on the agenda. It seems like we're getting into yes, the weeds. You're, right. yeah, you're getting in, yeah. So, right. uh -huh. um, thank you. Thank you, Mike, for bringing that up. Okay, uh, minutes. I can't touch the first one. I don't um, want to touch okay, the first anybody? One. Uh, yes, Kathleen. Uh, Courtney on page. Um, you're in the June 21st one. Yeah, on page three of the uh, Hilda work meeting, um, at some point um, on page three, before, uh, towards the bottom of the page, Bacon asked Hort if the trustees were okay with the town turning down their three contingencies. Hort said yes. At some point before that I make that comment, I've asked Dan about an appraisal, and I think his reply to me is there was no requirement for an appraisal to be done, but it's not mentioned that I've I've asked about that appraisal. I can go back and review the footage. It was yeah, mentioned thank you. somewhere. Um, so that's the only um, correction I have. Um, the second, well, the third, second correction I'll make is that. Um, you're listing uh, an audience member as KC Myers. It's just initial K and initial C. Thank you. Um, is how she uh, goes by her name. So um, with just those two amendments, I will um, move that we adopt the minutes from Friday, June 21st, 2019, as amended by myself. Is there a second? Second. Um, all in favor? All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Michael and Helen are. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Um, and now the minutes of June 25th. Oh, oh these I can do. Um, I move that we approve the minutes of June 25th as amended. Uh, Courtney, I also have a correction on that. Ooh. Page four on the draft. Uh, Bacon thanked the committee for their work. She said after reading the report, she was filled with deep regret for the actions the town took years ago that ruined the area. I'm pretty sure I didn't use the word ruined, but um, okay. caused that environmental damage. I might have said something to that extent. Um, I, I say uh, I say that Courtney because um, you know beauty's always going to be in the eye of the beholder, and I, I just wouldn't use a word like yeah. ruin. Okay, I'll double check the footage. Thank you. And um, the next change is going to page six on that particular um, halfway down or a little bit more. Um, Bacon said she attended the first meeting and was pleased with the plan. She said the state is seeking additional land for parking. Seems like an added benefit. Blah, blah, blah. I mentioned some of the benefits that the town might receive. Um, but I did not say DOT, which is the Department of Transportation. Yeah. I was referring to DCR. And Helen amended that. Yeah. Variety. Okay. Are you not looking at the, yeah. We have And by the couple. way, I did them last yeah. week. All right. I, I changed that, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, we're good. If you want to move those minutes, Helen. Um, is there a second? I think. Yes. Um, I moved it. Helen moved second. it. Second. All in favor? Thank you. And thank you, Kathleen, for catching it. And so now may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, um, um, second. All in favor? Oh, out of here. Thank you for staying.